welcome back to Living Local. If you're planning to put your home on the market, you have a variety of options as a seller. Knowing what choice is best for your situation can help make the process run much smoother. Joining us in studio once again is Kyle Robinson with the Robinson Group, brokered by EXP Realty LLC. Kyle, always great to have you in studio. Thanks, Brittany, for having me back. So we're going to be talking about several different options that sellers have when they put their home on the market. The first clearly is working with a real estate agent. So what do you think the benefits are of someone trying to sell their home and using a real estate agent? I think the major benefit is making sure you have real time stats. I think the thing is in markets, they change from day to day, from week to week and from month to month. And it's making sure that you have those up to date to comparables to make sure that you're getting the most money for your property. Also the marketing aspect of it, the multiple listing services were 97% of the homes in the world are sold. 92% of the homes in the United States are sold by realtors. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that certainly they're the ones with the information that's probably going to be most valuable to make sure you make the best decision possible for you and your family. Right. So, so that real estate agent is continuously educated on what the market is doing. And also there are going to be more eyes on your home if you're working with a real estate agent just because of the connections that they have. Absolutely. The multiple listing service is a very powerful thing. It puts it out to multiple things on the internet. Also, you know, as far as open houses, getting it out to 970 other realtors in the area helps as well. Definitely. So. Now, moving on to FISBO, of course, if mm -hmm. you're going to sell by for sale by owner, um, what are the advantages of going this route? I mean, certainly there's 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 cost advantages, right? So using a realtor can be expensive. Um, certainly they, they can save money in certain areas, but that's if they're willing, capable, and able to show homes. There's a lot of people that don't want to deal with the public or have strangers come into their house and meet them. So that's a lot of times when they're reaching out to realtors. But they're definitely definitely can be a good cost savings when selling for sale by owner, but it's making sure that you price it correctly because there's a lot of times that we see if we sell by owners not price it correctly, either high or low, mm -hmm. it's rarely that we actually see them price it correctly. And I'm not saying that negatively, but I see a lot of people leave money on the table and certainly there's investors and other people that are going to swoop in there to take advantage of those situations. Right. So, so the, maybe the, the money that you are saving by doing a FISBO, you may just be spending in the long run if you're not pricing it correctly. Yeah, typically they say that people that use realtors end up generally netting more money than selling for sale by owner. Oh, well, that's yes. definitely a factor to consider. And you mentioned this briefly. Another option is selling to an investor. So what makes this process different from selling with an agent or a FISBO? I think sometimes people, I mean, there's some distressed properties or sometimes there's some things going on in somebody's life that they really don't want strangers or other people coming into their home. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that fits the needs of investors and those sometimes might be the best buyers for you. But certainly these investors are going to buy at a reduced rate. It's not always best for the homeowner, but if that's what fits your situation the best, it's an option. So it's something to certainly look at. But I would definitely recommend reaching out to a realtor just so they can give you an idea what you're your house is worth, then you can hear from an investor and then decide what's best for you. Right. And, and how can people really figure out the best option between the three that we discussed for their particular situation? I think once they put it all down on paper, right? I think it's one of those things that you need to analyze, you know, what's the cost versus the benefit? You know, when you put it on the real with the realtor, mm -hmm. most likely you're going to sell it for more money. You're probably going to net more money. It's going to sell quicker. If you sell it for sell by owner, there are certain pockets in the Quad Cities that certainly do well for sell by owner. So those people might think about it a little bit differently. And then the investor, if maybe you have uh, a wife that's bedridden and you don't want to have to get her up for showings, it might be best to just deal with the investor. So everyone's situation is just a little bit different. But I think by putting it on paper, it will spell out what's best. And I tell people, if you want to try the for sale by owner route first and it doesn't work out, certainly we could always list it later. Right. So and I've certainly seen that in the Quad Cities, just driving through neighborhoods, you see the FISBO sign and then later on you see a real estate agent sign in there. So that's a great point to make. You know, if you, you want to try that, just to say that you did, but I think that you're right. It's every single person's situation is so different and opening up that conversation with a real estate agent, realtor, someone who has professional experience can really be helpful to navigate this uh, this just decision. One uh, Very, very true. Mm -hmm. One thing they definitely need to be aware of, and a lot of for sale by owner companies don't make the client aware of it, is that 90 plus percent of the for sale by owners are 
sold by a realtor on the buy side. So as much as you try to avoid having a realtor, there's a lot of there's a very good opportunity that that buyer is going to be bringing a realtor to represent them. So just expect that. So. Right, definitely. Now, what if your home isn't sold after you've purchased and moved into a new home? So basically your house is just sitting there vacant. You're probably paying a mortgage on it. What options are on the table? I mean, certainly I think a lot of times people look at renting property and not everyone is a suitable landlord. You know, it's one of those things. They do have property management companies to help offset things. Um, certainly if you're not a handy individual, that's something you'd want to look into, potentially maybe putting a home warranty on the property. I know that's a very stressful thing because a lot of times these people are banking on that property selling so they don't have, you know, if they have a two mortgages at the same time, it can certainly be a financial burden. So I think the first thing that we look at is renting. And then we could look at other things like rent to own, selling on contract. There's a lot of outside the box thinking that we do on my real estate team to get problem solved, right? And that's the big thing that the people want is the problem solved. So we put all these our problems out there. We try to figure out how many solutions we can and we let them decide what's going to work best for them. All right. And it's so. so great to have a professional in your court to kind of guide you through the best solution for your situation. Absolutely. Now, Kyle, when a seller is preparing their home for the market, what should they prioritize? I think a lot of times people, you know, I, the thing I tell people is let me come to your house to tell you what not to do. I think a lot of times people are spending money on things that aren't going to create value. Um, certainly you need to look at flooring and paint have a lot to do with it. If somebody feels like they can come in and set their stuff down, they're going to pay you more money. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we certainly look at first. Kitchens and bathrooms certainly sell houses, um, but there's a lot of things that people talk about. Hey, my furnace is 15, year old, 15 years old, should I replace it? No, it's mm -hmm. the whole mentality. If it's not broke, don't fix it. We'll put a home warranty on that. There's no reason to replace that. There's a lot of things that people bring up to us that aren't going to add value, and we certainly make sure that they understand that the cost is not going to, you're not going to get the benefit out of it. So carpet, paint, making sure that things look cosmetically, aesthetically pleasing. I think that those are the major things that you need to be considered. Make sure you think declutter items. I mean, if you have to get a storage unit because you've been living in a house for 30 years and you got a lot of stuff packed away, just get that stuff out of the house. You want to make sure things are free and clear. People want to have open passages to walk around. They want to feel comfortable and make spaces feel as big as they possibly can. Um, I know a lot of people talk about personalization. I don't necessarily think that you need to take down all your family mm -hmm. photos, but if you have a collage on the wall, I think that maybe that needs to go. I think people are concerned, oh my gosh, that's going to be a lot of nail holes that I'm mm -hmm. going to have to fill. So um, definitely get a realtor into your house so that way you can talk about what not to do and then you guys can address what little things you should tweak to make sure it's the best experience possible. Right. It's really very beneficial to have that one-on-one -on -one guidance. Well, Absolutely. Kyle, thank you so much for all the tips. We appreciate it. Thanks, Brittany. All right, guys, for more information, you can visit the Robinson Group QC.com. We'll also have those details posted on ourquadcities.com.